Hi everyone, this is a presentation by ML6. We are going to talk about how we use Grafana to deliver a 200% return on investment for Accolade wines and ultimately to save them wine loss. So the agenda for today, quick introduction to ML6. We're going to run through Accolade Wines business case, the Grafana solution and technical deep dive results and finally Q&A. So speaking today, I am Rebecca Brook. I'm the lead, um, the UK lead for ML6. And also on the line is Jeffrey Hagen, who's one of our machine learning engineers. So just a quick overview of ML6. We are a machine learning services company with more than 70 machine learning engineers. We have offices in Belgium, the Netherlands, UK and Germany. We're a premier partner of GCP um, and we are a um, a contributor to the open source community um, as much as possible. We also have ongoing research tracks. Um, we work in pretty much every industry vertical um, and leverage all the different applications of machine learning, such as computer vision, natural language processing, hyperpersonalization, reinforcement learning. And this project that we're going to be talking about today is a time series modeling use case um, using IoT. And as you can see on this slide, um, the work that we've done um, spans everything from reading gas meters um, in the utility sector down to automating the live streaming of amateur football matches in the sports media sector and a few things in between. So Accolade Wines, the challenge we had was to help them minimize their wine loss. They are an enormous bottling facility in the southwest of the UK where they bottle around 200 million litres of wine each year. They're the largest UK wine company and they won the Sustainable Manufacturer of the Year Award in the UK in 2018 and 2019. So efficiency and sustainability is a front and centre of everything that they do. The challenge that they had was they had a wine loss of about 0.8%, which is really good compared to the industry average of about 2% but 0.8% still equated to about 1.8 million litres of wine per year that they were losing. And the challenge really came from having a lack of visibility of the wine across the bottling line end to end. So they weren't sure or clear of where wine was being lost. Um, and I'll just explain that in a bit more detail on this slide, which shows a simplified version of the, of the process. So on the left, the wine arrives in the UK in shipping containers, it's then moved into storage tanks, it goes through a filtration process, it then goes into the bottle filler and then finally comes out the end in the bottle check and count. And what they're ultimately finding is that over the course of a run, the amount of wine in doesn't equate to the number of bottles out. And that's because each of those systems, so the, the storage tanks, the filtration, the bottle filler, they're all visualised on separate dashboards. And there's very little communication between those units or those pieces of equipment. And between those pieces of equipment, there's various pumps and valves and pipes and sensors, which are reading, for example, pressure and rate of flow. So if, for example, a buildup of pressure in one part of the system occurs, if like the filter is full, but wine is still being released from storage tanks, then valves open to release the pressure by siphoning wine into a covered drain, which isn't obvious to the operator at the time that it's occurring. So the challenge for us was to build an end-to-end -end visualization of the wine flow across the entire bottling line and to then create alerts for the operators when a wine loss could be occurring. And I'm now going to pass to Jeffrey, uh, who can go into the techie stuff in a bit more detail. Thank you, Rebecca, for this great introduction. So our task was basically to reduce the wine loss. So the first question that we asked ourselves is where do I lose wine? So Eclipse Wines already knew on an overall process run if they lost wine. But the, the analysis was done always in hindsight. And so they only knew when the wine was curious to measure like the input which comes in to the process and the output which is out getting out of the process, the, the wine flow. So the true question was like, how can we prevent it? So the only way to prevent this is to directly act upon it. And in this way, instead of hindsight analysis, we needed to create insights and even foresight. So the challenge was to get real-time insights in the manufacturing process and uh, directly communicate to their 
operators on the which were working on the line to prevent the wine loss when it is occurring. So we really uh, are going to a step from hindsight to insight to even foresight in predicting when the line loss were occurring. And today I will present uh, the steps that we took. So we took Eclat Wines to a journey to reduce the wine loss. So when we arrived on Eclat Park, we noticed, of course, that we have the manufacturing processes and the machines already in place, and even that e each machine has sensors and settings in one big uh, system. So we always already had the connectivity. Uh, there were some dashboards already present, but most dashboards were either for individual components of the complete system, or they were uh, always um, showing like the input and the output of the of the system and not necessarily what happened in between. So an overall overview of the process and where the wine loss is securing and when the wine loss is securing was not really there. So what we needed to do is to create real time insights uh, in their time series data. This is why we use Grafana. And, and also secondarily, we need to have analytics and alerting systems in place to prevent the wine loss from happening. So we had two kind of alert systems. One is more a rule-based alerts, and the second one is more a machine learning-based alerts. And we, I will discuss them today both in the talk and to give you more uh, insight in, in what we did exactly. If you see this graph, basically we, the journey starts with the hindsight information that they already, already have. We, we created insights from them, and in the end, we have like want to come to a foresight system in which we can really do intelligent and predictive actions on preventing the wine loss from happening. So on this slide, you see the solution that we built, and I will just take you through this schematic overview. So the solution built is on GCP, so Google Cloud Platform, and we built on Google Cloud Platform because it allows us to iterate quickly and also provide a scalable solution. So the scalable solution is mainly because we can also run multiple lines, we can run it in multiple countries, and if we need more processing power, memory power, or storage, we can automatically scale our solution. So on the bottom left, you can see the Eclat Wines network, and we have a schematic overview of the machines. These machines are controlled by something called PLCs, and what we did is create a Python script in which we're gonna read data from the PLCs. So every second, we will read sensor values from the PLCs, and we need to, are going to store them in a database on the Google Cloud Platform. So we have a messaging queue, uh, Cloud Google Cloud PubSub, in place, uh, which will just receive the messages. And what it will then do, using a tick stack, uh, so Telegraph can be as a connector for PubSub, and Telegraph will just store the, the, the data into Influx database. And we have Grafana as a dashboard to uh, for the operators to, to get these insights and get these foresight in, in the wine uh, flows that are occurring. So the tech stack is running a Kubernetes engine and we expose the Grafana dashboard um, on a certain domain so that users from Eclat Wines can log in into Grafana and basically uh, get the insights that they need. So let's dive quickly into the dashboard itself. I will take you through what the operator is seeing and also explain more about the alerts that we've built. Um, so here you can see the, the, the dashboard that we created. Um, this dashboard is created for a particular line, so it will give you a complete overview of the complete process. Um, it's meant for, for the operators, uh, so as I said, that they can directly act when, when the wine loss is securing. Um, so what you will see is they, uh, yeah, you first will see the status and alerts. I will go into that uh, shortly. Uh, but then you basically get an overview of the bottling process. Um, so for example, you can see which tank is currently active, uh, what is, for example, the wine type, how much volume is there, uh, which filter are we using. Uh, this information is more general information about the process. Um, next, you can also see information about the total volumes of wine that are transferred, for example, which uh, are from the, the, the beginning of the process and the end of the process, and also the difference between them. And finally, you uh, see some, some flow rates. Um, so these are just the amount of liters per second uh, at uh, several points in the system. Um, 
At the bottom, you also see these alerting figures. Uh, these are not meant to, to show for, to the operators, but help us in, in creating these alerts uh, to, to reduce the wine loss. Um, so basically, at the, at the top, you can see the alerts. Um, so the alerts that we created are, uh, uh, these alerts are the rule-based alerts, which means that, um, yeah, we just uh, programmed the, 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 the logic behind them. So for example, if something happens, then this alert should fire. Um, and then the operator will directly be notified. So for example, if you look at the first alert, um, it is basically showing you, okay, at the startup of a, of a, of a run, um, when the volume of wine in the tank house uh, uh, um, is, and is unequal to the, the, the volume or in, in the filter, then basically we know, okay, um, this is, doesn't add up. So basically the, now we have wine less securing. Um, the same, for example, goes for the, the bottom one. Um, if if a, a level in the tank is dropping and there is, for example, no uh, flow in, in the filters, then we know uh, that this doesn't add up. This doesn't make sense for the process. So we will alert the operator. And in this sense, he can directly uh, yeah, do something about the wine loss. Um, another feature that we built in is a kind of heartbeat of the system. Uh, this is the second alert that you see. Um, so whenever there's a loss of data occurring, so when we, uh, for some reason, uh, cannot connect to the PLCs and read the data, uh, we will notify the right people to, do, to have a look at the system. Uh, they will get an email and can directly act when the system is down. One of the reasons we uh, chose for Grafana is uh, because it offers a lot of nice features which are out of the box um, and which we don't need to program. Um, so one of the things we really uh, liked uh, is, for example, that you can select different time frames. So you can also do analysis uh, in hindsight. Uh, if you want, you can get more insight if you know that a particular run has a lot of wine loss. So you can uh, know exactly when it happens and where it happened. Um, so for example, if you look at the bigger picture, um, yeah, you can zoom in, for example, on, on particular parts of the run. Uh, so you can zoom in on, on, on uh, the, the start of a run and see uh, how the startup is going. Uh, and you can also compare it uh, between different runs to do some analysis. Um, one of the nice things is also that you can annotate your data. You can add labels to your data. So for example, when you know that wine loss is securing, um, then you can write uh, wine loss uh, reason a uh, and in that sense uh yeah you label the data and this is something which we really use uh, with machine learning as i will come to that shortly as well uh, so these are just one of the yeah the, the, the main reasons why we chose for grafana and not decide to uh, build something uh, from scratch so diving a little bit deeper into the rule-based alerts these rule-based alerts help us to reduce the possible wine loss so this is for the wine loss that we know that can occur so for example, when you accidentally open the wine valve, the wine is flowing away. You know this can occur, so you can warn the operator. A second example is, for example, when you change from wine type A to wine type B, you know that you have to throw away a certain amount of wine. So this should be within limits. So this change of a loss is something that we expect, but it should be within boundaries. Uh, another example is, for example, if the input and the output flow of the process is not matching, we know that the wine loss is occurring. But what about the wine loss that we don't know if it is occurring? For this, we can use machine learning techniques. So basically, the approach that we took now is kind of if-else, kind of old algorithmic approach. So basically, if you need to classify the fruits on the left, what you need to do is you need to create features for this these images. So for example, if you want to know if there's an apple, orange, or banana, the first thing you can ask yourself, okay, if this object is round, then it must be an orange or an apple. Then if you would, for example, include the color, like if it's orange, then you know it's certain it's an orange. And if it's green, then it's an apple. If it's not one of these cases, then else it is a banana. And this is kind of an old algorithmic approach. And you can see from, for example, for images, it would be already quite difficult to do and follow this old approach. So luckily, we have machine learning. So how does a machine learning algorithm work? So as you can see in this picture, basically 
what the machine learning algorithm needs is an input, uh, which is in this case an image, but this also can be time series data or it can be uh, text data. Um, and what you would also need is an, is an output uh, or in a label. So in this case, it's uh, the labels are apple, orange, and banana. And machine learning algorithm will is a self-learning algorithm and will basically determine the relation between the input and the output itself. So I want to explain this uh, using a kind of graphical way, uh, an example from the deep learning field. And as you can see here on the left, um, the question is basically, okay, is in this image, is, is this a cat or is this a dog? So what we would need is an input, which is the image itself. Um, and then we have a deep neural network. Um, so the most important thing about this is that uh, what we want to predict, uh, is this a cat or a dog? These are our labels so, or even our output. So as you can see, the input of the neural network is the image itself. So basically they are the pixels of the, of the image. Um, and we uh, kind of transform them in neurons. Um, and these neurons, they can activate uh, neurons in next layers. So uh, as you can see on the diagram on the right, you have a few hidden layers. Um, and some of these pixels, they will activate uh, neurons in the next layer, in the next layer, in the next layer, until we hit the final layer. And the final layer is basically will give us the probability um, if this is a cat or if this is a dog. So a machine learning algorithm uh, will determine the relationships between these layers uh, the, or the activation functions, uh, the weights and the biases of the system itself. Um, and it, it uh, learns by giving it a lot of examples. So you need a lot of images uh, with also a lot of labels. Um, and then um, basically it is one big mathematical function which we're trying to solve uh, using some um, uh, loss function optimization techniques. So this is just a one example of uh, machine learning. There are a lot more. Um, the example I just showed you is a supervised problem. Uh, so a supervised problem basically means that we need um, an, an input and an output. Uh, so what you can do with this is, a, for example, a classification as we just saw, but also uh, regression models. Um, yeah, these are just the, the two highlights that I wanna uh, highlight today. Um, but you also have other techniques. And one of these techniques is called unsupervised learning. Uh, and instead of having the, these, these input and these, these label data, you can also just use the input. Um, and uh, what you can then do is use kind of clustering techniques um, to, to cluster data which looks similar. Um, a last field that I shortly wanna highlight is reinforcement learning. Uh, and this is basically learn by doing. Um, so instead of using label data or clustering techniques, uh, what you can do is basically um, just uh, uh, punish or reward a, a, a computer algorithm if it does something well. It will reward it. If it does something bad, it will uh, punish it. And in this way, it can also learn. So I know this is like a lot to take in at the moment. Um, and also given the time, uh, the, the most important takeaway that I want you guys to have is basically that you need an, uh, for a machine learning algorithm, algorithm, usually you have some kind of input, um, then you have some kind of self-learning algorithm or kind of magic in the, in the, in the middle. And what you're try, trying to do is always predict a, a certain uh, output. So when it comes to time series data, we can also use machine learning algorithms. So when compared to computer vision and natural language processing algorithms, time series and machine learning is not so mature yet. Luckily, there are a few models which are available and I would like to highlight three of them. So the first one is classification. So what we could do with time series data is for each data point that we have, we can uh, assign a class to it. So we can classify, for example, if this is a good quality or a bad quality. This works in a similar fashion as the dog and cat. So what you would need is you would need an input and you would also need labels data. So you would need to say for each data point, okay, is this data point, for example, good or is this bad? 
or is this uh, during a changeover or is this just during a normal production run? So the tedious talk that someone needs to do is you need to have an expert really labeling all the data and this is a lot of work. Luckily, there are other techniques that we can use and one is the, of them is called next step prediction. So it's again, similar as the previous example. So it's a supervised learning problem. And what we will do is predict the next value. If we predict the next value and then compare it with the value that is actually happening a moment in time later, if the difference between the predicted value and the actual value is too big, it is likely uh, that there is an anomaly going on and we can flag it as this is possibly a wine loss. So basically, you don't need to label the data. What you will do is you use the historical data as the label. Example of where the techniques and is used is basically, for example, stock market prediction, um, demand prediction, but also wine flows. The last technique that I want to highlight is a clustering technique, and it's an unsupervised learning problem. So the goal is to detect unusual behavior. So we can extract features from time series data. So for example, features can be maximum, averages, minimum over a certain time frame. And what we will do is we will, we'll, for example, plot this as you can see on the, on the graph on the right. And if you have the right features, the data can be clustered. So we can create groups of data points, data features, which are similar. And we can say, okay, these are normal data. And then we have also some noise, noisy data, which doesn't fit the cluster. And you can flag them the, these as unusual behavior. And this can then be a wine loss. Um, so the tremendous benefit of this is that you don't need to label your data. Uh, you can, because, because of course you can say that which groups are uh, similar what that group actually is. So for example, if, if the change over is always uh, clustered together, you can label it as, as a changeover, but it is, is not required. And in this sense, it is a beneficial technique because we don't need to spend a lot of time, of, of time labeling the data. Unfortunately, I cannot show the outcome of the machine learning models in the Grafana dashboard due to confidentiality. However, you can imagine that we can have the predicted values of the machine learning models, we can store them in the InfluxDB and also visualize them using Grafana. So what did we achieve? In the end, in six months, we were, by the system, we basically reduced the wine loss and showed the 200% return of investment. And we really used these alerts, both rule-based and machine learning uh, alerts to warn the operator when one is securing, so you can directly act upon it. So why did we choose Grafana? Uh, so Grafana was really the go-to for us for this, basically due to a few reasons. First of all, we had out of the book alerting systems where we can warn the operator when a wireless is securing and also warn developers when the system is down using these heartbeat. Secondly, we use the annotation function of Grafana for creating labeled data. As I mentioned, for supervised machine learning problems, this is really important that we have labeled data. And basically, Grafana comes out of the box with a labeling tool. So this is really helpful to us. Then the operators uh, really enjoyed working with Grafana, the user interface, the dashboarding of it. Uh, it's really easy to use. Um, the, it's really user friendly. And we didn't uh, have to explain a lot for our priorities to directly get going with it. And lastly, we can also apply huge customization possibilities by, for example, not only showing time series data, but for example, also building triggers, uh, showing images, showing uh, different kinds of data. Uh, I didn't show this in the demo today, but this is a functionality which we really uh, use and also one of the reasons why we chose for Grafana. So thank you for your time. I really ho hope you enjoyed the talk. Um, it's now time for some Q&A in, in the Slack channels. Uh, but before I leave, I just wanted to say that you can always connect to ML6 and we are available on one of the channels shown in this slide. Thank you.